This is an AH-1Z Viper attack helicopter. What's worth noting is not its appearance, but its unique weapon mounting method. On each wingtip, there are two AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. On the left side, there is an LAU-68 rocket pod carrying seven APKWS-2 laser-guided rockets. On the same position on the other side, there is an LAU-61 rocket pod with 19 Hydra-70 unguided rockets. On the far left inner side, there is a quad pack launcher for AGM-114 Hellfire air-to-ground missiles. On the corresponding position on the other side, there is a 100-gallon auxiliary fuel tank. The entire aircraft, both in terms of structure and weight, lacks symmetry. It's important to know that any aircraft with an imbalance in weight on both sides is highly prone to accidents during flight. However, strangely enough, the unconventional configuration of the U.S. military has turned the Viper into the most lethal variant among the Cobra series of armed helicopters. What's the principle behind this? Speaking of the Cobra, it's a familiar name to everyone. It can be traced back to the Vietnam War in 1967, specifically the Bell AH-1209. Going further back, in 1959, the UH-1 Huey gained fame during the Vietnam War, where it filled the sky. The early AH-1 shared common parts with the UH-1 and was used in combination. This tradition has been maintained by the Marine Corps to this day. The AH-1Z Viper and the latest UH-1Y Venom still share a large number of components, including the tail rotor, engine, gearbox, transmission, avionics system, some software, controllers, displays, and more, totaling up to 84%. When the AH-1 was first introduced, the Army was also using it. It wasn't until 1975 that they got their own AH-64 Apache. Compared to the fully loaded 10-ton Apache, the Cobra series, with its single engine and teetering rotor system, can be considered a light-armed helicopter, weighing only 4 tons when fully loaded. However, after more than half a century and due to the Marine Corps' persistence, the latest Viper features twin engines and four-bladed rotors, a fully loaded weight of 8 tons, and a price that is comparable to the Apache. The Viper made its first flight in 2000 and was officially put into production in 2003. As of 2023, including the recent export of two helicopters to the Czech Republic, the total number of orders for the Viper is 280. At the very front of the Viper is the M197 20mm Gatling gun with three barrels, carrying a conventional ammunition load of 750 rounds. There are a total of six hardpoints on both sides of the short wings, and the wingtips can be modified. AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, 70mm Hydra-70 unguided rockets, APKWS-2 laser-guided rockets, 7-tube LAU-68 rocket pods, 19-tube LAU-61 rocket pods, AGM-114 Hellfire quad-pack missile launchers, and 100-gallon auxiliary fuel tanks can all be mounted. Looking back at the initially extremely asymmetrical photo, from a practical standpoint, it can be observed that when facing opponents with long-range engagement capabilities, the Viper can use for Hellfire missiles. Within 5,000 meters, if there are multiple targets, it can employ 19 Hydra rockets. For more accuracy, it can use 7 APKWS guided rockets, and for close combat, it has 750 rounds of 20 by 102 mm cannon ammunition with a range of 2,000 meters and a rate of fire of 3,000 rounds per minute. Who can withstand such firepower? In addition, the Viper is equipped with two Sidewinder missiles, which can not only engage unmanned aerial vehicles, but also defend against airborne opponents. Furthermore, it is equipped with advanced avionics systems such as the TADS PNVS Day Night Helmet, third generation thermal imaging sensors, infrared signal suppressors, chaff IR decoy flares, radar warning receivers, missile warning systems, laser warning systems, and more. If the mission requires extended time in the air, it can also carry a 100 gallon auxiliary fuel tank. It has the capability to effectively suppress close-range targets on land, such as shore-based firepower, sea-based aircraft, and fast boats, and it possesses strong formation escort abilities. 
Although the AH-1Z is an improved version of the AH-1W, 95% of its components have been redesigned and developed from scratch. Less than 2% of the parts are carried over from the AH-1W, which makes it fair to say that the Viper is a completely new variant. The AH-1Z has a length of 17.8 meters, a rotor diameter of 14.6 meters, and a height of 4.37 meters. It is powered by a larger and more powerful transmission system and gearbox. The rotor features a brand new four-blade system that can automatically fold. It is made of composite materials and can withstand fire from 23mm cannons. To improve stability, the tail rotor has also been redesigned with four blades. The engine design of the AH-1Z continues the dual-engine configuration of the Cobra series. It is equipped with two General Electric T700GE401C turboshaft engines, with each engine producing 1,800 horsepower. The advantage of the twin-engine design is that it can provide sufficient power and electrical output for normal flight even if one engine fails. With these enhancements, the Viper achieves a maximum speed of 411 km per hour, a climb rate of 14.2 meters per second, and a service ceiling of 6,100 meters. The internal structure of the aircraft includes self-sealing fuel tanks that can withstand fire from 23 mm cannons, providing a range of 685 km using only internal fuel. The external design of the Viper retains the sleek and slender fuselage of the Cobra series. The side-mounted engine intakes are located behind the tandem cockpit. Due to the addition of new electronic equipment and the need for balance, the length of the fuselage has been further extended. On both sides of the fuselage, there are two longer stub wings that provide lift and serve as mounting points for wingtip weapons. In addition to the power system and armament upgrades, the most significant improvement in the AH-1Z attack helicopter is its avionics and reconnaissance equipment. For example, the ANAAQ-30 Hawkeye target sight system is located at the front of the fuselage and includes a forward-looking infrared imager, low-light color TV, laser rangefinder, and iSafe laser target designator. With this system, the pilot can identify and engage targets beyond the range of missiles or ground-based anti-aircraft artillery. Another highlight is the flight helmet developed by Thales of France. It features a built-in high-definition projection TV system that overlays flight data and target images for the pilot. The helmet can also be fitted with night vision goggles for highly integrated night vision capabilities. All these facilities further enhance the operational efficiency of the pilots. In summary, the AH-1Z Viper addresses various shortcomings of the Cobra series, offering a powerful propulsion system, advanced information warfare capabilities, and unparalleled survivability. It can provide close support to ground forces, provide long-duration escort for fleets, and engage targets with various weapons at longer distances. It is undoubtedly one of the essential weapons for future combat. Apart from the United States, Bahrain and the Czech Republic have also purchased the AH-1Z Viper. However, despite many countries considering the AH-1Z during the evaluation phase, most eventually abandoned the idea due to various reasons, with South Korea opting for the Apache in the end. Export matters are complex, involving diplomatic relations and political factors, and the Apache's reputation as the world's top attack helicopter likely played a significant role in the Viper's difficulty in securing export deals. Nevertheless, the U.S. government seems to encourage the continued production and sale of the Viper. The recent delivery of two newly manufactured AH-1Z helicopters to the Czech Republic demonstrates that the story of the Cobra helicopter family is far from over. In recent years, the Czech Republic has accelerated the pace of phasing out old Soviet equipment and has begun to introduce a large number of new weapons from Western countries for its army and navy. In 2017, the United States approved the sale of 12 UH-1Y helicopters and other related equipment to the Czech Republic at a total cost of approximately $575 million. When calculated on a per-unit basis, the cost exceeded $40 million each. Although this price could buy some fairly decent light fighter jets on the international market, it was evident that the Czech Republic had its own plans for making such a purchase. 
since the AH-1Z Viper and UH-1Y helicopters share 85% of their components, including the engine, control system, and main and tail rotors, procuring both types or even multiple variants of U.S. military helicopters would undoubtedly be advantageous for logistics, maintenance, and component replacement. Therefore, this was clearly a well-planned transaction. As expected, in 2019, the U.S. government once again approved the sale of four AH-1Z Vipers to the Czech Republic at a total cost of $205 million, with a unit price exceeding $50 million. On July 26, 2023, two brand new Vipers manufactured for the Czech Republic were delivered to the country via AC-17 transport aircraft. Looking at the unit price, it is clear that this method of obtaining U.S. protection through buying expensive weapons was quite costly. However, when considering the deeper strategic implications, the Czech Republic undoubtedly made a significant gain. In May 2022, just three months after the outbreak of the Russo-Ukrainian War, the Czech Republic unconditionally transferred a certain number of Mi-24 and Mi-35 helicopters to Ukraine. The United States praised this action and stated that other countries should follow the Czech Republic's lead. Following this, the United States provided eight helicopters to the Czech Army free of charge, including six Vipers and two UH-1YS. In essence, the Czech Republic exchanged a certain number of old helicopters for nearly $400 million worth of advanced American equipment. With this example, Poland, known for its cautious approach, also considered purchasing Vipers and Apaches, intending to directly transfer its retired Mi-24 helicopters to Ukraine. Slovakia, which provided MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine, was similarly rewarded by the United States. As a result, Slovakia received a grand prize of 12 AH-1Z Vipers. Considering the unit prices of Vipers, which are typically around $50 million, Slovakia obtained weapons worth $1 billion by providing a relatively small amount of equipment. This included 500 Hellfire anti-tank missiles. With such significant benefits, even Germany is considering purchasing AH-1Z helicopters. It should be noted that the Tiger Attack helicopter jointly developed by Germany and France is not significantly superior to the AH-1Z. The purpose of the United States in doing so is simple. European countries switching to American weapons will significantly shrink Russia's market. In the long run, this undoubtedly benefits American defense companies. Eastern European countries have long been a market for Russian helicopters, but recently, these countries have been shifting towards the United States. From this development trend, it is evident that the H-1 helicopter family, especially the Viper, has once again proven its dominance in the European market and is poised for its second spring in Europe. Some say that U.S. defense contractors have profited from the Russo-Ukrainian war. However, I do not necessarily agree. The war between Russia and Ukraine has awakened many countries that were previously wavering between the United States and Russia. Setting aside notions of justice and evil and focusing solely on military strength, it is clear whom they can rely on. Spending a little more money can bring steady development to one's own country. This kind of transaction is a surefire way to profit without loss.